move on to our next presentation that is on research in protected areas by Professor Dr. Sebel Sen Gupta. Uh, I would just like to give a brief about uh, Professor Sen Gupta. He's professor in Assam Don Bosco University, India. Over to you, sir. So if you can just test your audio, we can see you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, very clear. And uh, I would like to share my screen. Yes. yes. Just share screen. Yes, sir, we can see it. Just, uh, you know, put it in full screen mode. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mehita. I'm uh, also the organizer as well as the chair. In fact, uh, I would like to switch off my video, uh, if you permit me. Sure, sure, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that will save the bandwidth, yeah. Yeah, there is a problem with the bandwidth. Yeah, I got it. So thank you all of you. Uh, in fact, I'm starting a bit early as I get the time. And, uh, this my presentation will be protected areas in the mountain with special reference to the Eastern Himalaya. And already I have been introduced by Dr. Mehta. So before going into the details of that, the protected areas, I would like to share some of my views regarding the mountain, how the mountains are defined. It was, I'm following here the couples uh, actually classification of mountain based on elevation, range of elevation, that is local range of elevation of each uh, zone or each class and degree of slope. The first three is ba based on only on elevation. The first three classes while the Rest of the classes based on elevation, range of elevation, as well as degree of elevation. And we have six different types of classes. Now, our main theme of this entire workshop is mountain. Why mountain? Because it's a very important land cover and around 26.5% of the world's total continental land surface are under mountain. And ISO's county code standard that there are 249 countries. In fact, there are 194 countries independent and rest are uh, actually recognized. 197 includes mountains and Mountains occurs in 88% of the world terrestrial ecoregions. So mountain represents an extensive cover of terrestrial ecoregion, terrestrial ecosystem. And at the same time, it has a great role to play in shaping the environment, protecting the culture, protecting the biodiversity and also maintaining the identity, identity of the mountain actually tribes or those who are living in mountain. It also has certain values in terms of providing livelihood and also minimizing natural hazards. And these mountains, due to their local extent of physical conditions related to elevation as well as slope. It supports different grades of living organism and they have special sets of environments. Each area has special sets of environments as a result of which this mountains actually supports endemism. And this some of the most biological diverse, I'm passing through these slides very quickly because it is not related to my topic, just I'm introducing my subject. Uh, are some of the most biological diverse environments and historically as well as 
present day, mountains act as last refuge. We, we know about the glacial period during which the mountain tops act as a refugium, as well as during the present day with the changing in the environment with Anthropocene area. That means now we are in human age and this age, we, there's that species are moving towards this pristine environment of the mountains. So mountains act as there's that last refuge. Now regarding the conservation and protection of mountain, mountain gain importance came to focus only in the last part of the 20th century. In the 1992 Earth Summit, mountain gain focus along with the coral reefs, tropical rainforest and desert, and awareness of mountains after that was increased. And does that ultimately within 10 years, the Global Mountain Summit was held in Bishkek, and this actually provide the platform which committed, this platform, Bishkek Mountain Platform, committed to protect the Earth's mountain ecosystem, including the diversity, as well as maintaining the cultural identity, reducing the poverty, and also uh, actually providing food security, etc. And in this platform, the importance of protected area was reinforced. Earlier, actually, uh, presenter has already described about the protected areas. What is a protected area? An IUCN definition is known to all, which is specially dedicated to the protection and maintenance of biological diversity as well as cultural resources. And we have around 17% of the mountain areas as protected areas and which representing quite a large percentage of terrestrial protected areas around 32%. But what's the alarming, alarming situation is nearly 40% of the world mountain range are not under protected cover. And also out of the key biodiversity areas located in mountain, 40% plus are not at all protected and 52% are less protected than actually 30% less protected. And this alarming situation, how to come out? Again, if we look at the Thorsell Hamilton actually recognition around 100 sites being recognized as heritage mountain site of which 72 are already recorded and another 28 are potential and there are more than 60 percent biosphere reserves under man and biosphere program of unesco are located in the mountainous area I'm coming down to the Himalayas and Himalayas are also important because there are four actually world heritage site in the mountain area. That's a great Himalayan National Park Conservation Area, Kanchenjunga, Nanda Devi, as well as Valley of Flowers. And as far as Biosphere Reserve under MAB, that is Man and, uh, uh, Man and Biosphere Program, there are again four Biosphere Reserve in the IHR in the Indian Himalayan region. However, there are why researchers are decision to overcome the challenges. And basic information regarding the environment, regarding the uh, biological composition, regarding the human interference, as well as climatic changes, all are required. But major weakness in the protected area global system, as far as mountain is concerned, mountain protected areas are mostly established considering their spiritual or recreational values. And that's mostly established at the peak. And 
in education, in education to safeguard the water resources area of mountains and high diversity, we know the diversity is higher at the lower altitude rather than higher. When we go up, the higher altitude has more endemism, more actually this uh, uh, uniqueness, but lower altitude area are highly diversified, but that are lacking. And ideally mountain PA should be summit to the seas and there should be certain corridors in order to respond to climate change. And there is a classic example in this Eastern Himalaya, this conservation corridor from the actually tropical lowland area that is the Manos Tiger Reserve in India as well as Bhutan. There are series of conservation areas in the Bhutan up to the crest. There is a continuous actually protected area from the tropical lowland to the crest of the Himalaya in the Jigmi Dorjin National Park. And such connectivity is essential in order to maintain the migration of the species and genes in, and in order to actually overcome the challenges of the climate change. Now, research in protected areas of Eastern Himalaya. Now we know what's the Eastern Himalaya. Eastern Himalaya is the Terai arc, including the Nepal, Bhutan, and there's the Shikim of Shikim Darjeeling, as well as the Northeastern India. And it is the most intact biodiversity rich area. It's a transboundary, actually biodiversity complex of the Himalaya and it has been due to its importance, it has been described as center of plant diversity, Eastern Asia, uh, Asiatic Regional Center for Endemism Museum, as well as cradle of plant diversity, etc. Now, in this, from this area, basically from the far Eastern Himalaya landscape, thousand articles were being analyzed related to biodiversity uh -huh. by Besnet et al. in 2019. And it has revealed that the first publication from Eastern Himalaya dated back to 1883. And as I say, the mountain gained importance in the recent years and in the present century, most of the research works being performed and 80% of the total publication on Eastern Himalaya, specifically for Eastern Himalaya was from the present century. And there are different types of actually researches being performed and going on species related or species oriented research, as well as uh, ecosystem related research, climatic change related researches. And more studies focused on species related, followed by ecosystem and genetics actually occupy a very negligible percentage. And as we know all the time, we are actually uh, running out of the charismatic species, charismatic me megaphone of mammals are mostly studied, followed by arthropods, the plants, angiosperms. Besides arthropods, there is the special being mentioned about the insects and birds. Publication on, in the recent time, we are getting publication on fishes, publication on amphibians, the reptiles, but as a whole, publication of lower vertebrates, invertebrates, and other lower kingdoms like monera, protista, fungi are also scarce. And the ecosystem level of studies focus mostly on the forest. And more than 50% of the 58% rather, actually research was on forest, followed by freshwater ecosystem and very little work at the crest that is in Alpine and the Tundra region. As I said, 
in the Eastern Himalaya, research is mainly focused on inventory and diversity, discovery of the species, distribution of the species, study of the species biology, conservation biology, and in recent times, lots of publication in the last, actually 10, 15 years, lots of publication being made on effect of climate change. Now, the studies revealed that this area, this Eastern Himalaya, also it seeps into the lower area of Bengal in India, Assam in India, and also it seeps into the Tibetan Plateau. And the lowland region of the area comprises 17 landscapes for the Bengal tiger, and also low-lying as well as higher altitude area in Nepal are the last bastion of the, for the great 100 rhinoceros. And here, there's a, within this, this the Himalaya, Eastern Himalaya part is a global biodiversity hotspot. There are four global ecoregions. There are 200 ecoregions being identified. It is also being recognized as critical landscapes of international biological importance. As I already mentioned, World Heritage Site, there are two World Heritage Site here. Endemic bird areas, Global Center for Plant Diversity, and at least 564 new species being discovered in the, from the year between 1998 to 2014, which is at an average, 35 new species being discovered every year for the last 10 years. And this discovery is mostly on plants, 375 plants. There are quite a good number of amphibians that's in 2021 also, a, a couple of species of amphibians and one species of reptiles, two spe three species of fishes, birds and mammals are being described and at least 100 new invertebrates are being discovered from this region. Research articles spanning over diversity, distribution and abundance on plants, on mammals, reptiles, on amphibians, on fishes, on arthropods. These are the, all these are the workers that have worked out. And mostly if, if you look at, they are in the present century. Many factors contribute to the loss of biodiversity, including the habitat loss, and fragmentation is one of the factor. This fragmentation and loss of habitat directly actually affect the survival of species. And habitat fragmentation and loss of habitat are the two major areas on, on which continuous researches are going on because there is extreme pressure of clearing of this, the vegetation, clearing of the forest areas for human habitation and for other purposes. The threats of biodiversity arising from climate change are very acute in Eastern Himalaya as because it is the region of endemic and threatened species. And these species, if we consider, they have very limited range of distribution. Now, it has been, studies have revealed that the climate change across Himalaya is manifested in the form of glacial melt, change in sowing and harvesting season, decreased productivity of crops, invasion of new species, 
drying up springs, shifting geographical ranges, changes in the species composition, extinction of species, and all these are being, being exemplified here. Upward extension and shift in altitudinal range of species due to climate change has been reported variously. It has been reported for plants as well as animals. And shift has created novel niche for birds. The blood pheasants, which was reported mostly from the 1500 meter altitude, now they are actually present at 3,300 meter altitude. Similarly, the case of snow pigeon, as well as the rusty, very short wing. And there is a clear evidence that this rusty, very, actually very short wing, the birds has a elevation range extension of around 700 meters. Many previous studies, earlier studies about Smith, Waltner, recorded that the Kelonian, the turtles and tortoises from Himalaya, from mainly from the Shikim. Now still it is available, new, spe new species, range extension being discovered in Urunachal, but from Shikim, the turtles and tortoises are probably got exterminated because they are not being cited despite serious effort of finding it out. Another serious impact in the shift of altitude and limits of the species of cobra, that is monoclet cobra, and also the king cobra, the mountain killback, as well as the worm snake also showed shift. These are all reported through uh, research and the Scutiger sikimensis, an endemic species of sikim, also exceeded its range by 1100, 1100 meter. And the very common toad, Dottofrinus himalayanus, was observed up to 3300 meter. But historical record shows it. Highest elevation as 2,700 meter. Is there is any issue, sir? No, I think someone's mic was open. Okay, okay, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's happened. Now, the research is also being performed on breeding, specifically breeding of certain amphibians. The bush frogs, there's the philotus, which used to breed during May to September. There's a research being carried out and found that they are breeding now in March, April, advance in breeding due to the change in the climate. Now, it is not only in philota species, but also in other Nanorana libigi also. And with the change in the climate, short and short, heavy episode of early rain occurs and the Frogs are trying to adapt in this early rain, but the early rain has a catastrophic effect because there's the early rain followed by dry spells lead to drying up many streams before amphibians complete their metamorphosis. And that's have resulted into, may resulted into extinction of species as well. Species of high altitude areas, specifically in the transition zone, the plants mainly are more vulnerable to climate change. There was research also on how the people are perceiving this climate change. People consider climate change as a big threat. And they consider this, the climate change as an excessive human activity and also to certain extent a natural climatic variation. This majority of the people believe that the flood that's being experienced during early March, April and during flood landslides, increase in temperature that is warming 
degradation of the land and also drying of re water resources because erratic rainfall has resulted in drying up of many of the uh, many of the this uh, perennial streams, pest outbreak and food shortage are the major causes of climate change. Now we know very little about the vulnerability of mountain ecosystem to climate change. But empirical data and computer simulation suggest that temperature at higher elevation and altered rainfall pattern at lower elevation are, the major, are of major concern that may create catastrophic effect in the mountain ecosystem. And small changes in these regions, temperature can turn ice and snow to water and rapid changes in the climatic zone may occur around the slopes. Various organization, what is the silver lining? Various organization like the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development, UNESCO, MacArthur Foundation are working and for integrating conservation and development through transboundary cooperation. Now, through studies, research gaps, many of the research gaps are identified and whatever lessons learned provided a good platform for initiating certain projects encompassing the challenges, how to face the challenges. And this has resulted in greater research in the region, the increasing number of such studies believed to be, believed to assist in integrating science and management in the wake of the elevated rate of floral and faunal species loss as a whole extinction. And this research is mainly related to, now presently related to climate change, and also how the species are adapting to that climate change. With this, i like to conclude my presentation today and like to offer the grassroots organization for inviting me to share some of my thoughts. And thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you so much, Professor Sain Gupta. And it was really an enlightening uh, you know, presentation because the facts and figures that you just showed on your presentation, that was real, they were really, really good. You reiterated the importance of mountains, which we all wanted to hear. And at the same time, you emphasized on the Eastern Himalayas uh, biodiversity. And the figure that you shared that 564 new species at the rate of 35 new species per year are being discovered from this region. So we can imagine the diversity of you know, flora and fauna of Eastern Himalayas. And also the facts that you shared about the effects of climate change and the evidences that you projected in your presentation were really good and how the species are adapting to climate change and also the research gaps, you know, where people can work. That was really good. Thank you so much, sir. And also thank you all the expert presenters for, you know,